Hello my quilting friends. Today I am quilting this little project that I painted I think seven years ago and I'm going to show you how I quilt a beautiful painted landscape like this. Real quick a few settings on my machine. This is the Eversone Sparrow 20. You can learn more about it at leahday.com slash so 20. I have my machine set to the number one straight stitch. It's in the center position and I've lowered my stitch length to zero. And what that does is that just limits the movement of the feed dogs. If you can't go down to zero on your machine, that's a-okay. Just the lowest setting is perfectly fine. And what that's gonna do is just limit the movement of the feed dogs so I can move the quilt in all different directions. Now I'm starting cold, so I'm gonna wiggle over here and just do a little bit of stippling just to warm up, just so I can get a good feel for my hands, a nice smooth movement going. And this is gonna be a hoop quilt. I already have a hoop picked out to put this into, so this is gonna get cut off. I can absolutely play in the background anytime I need to try out a design. Now, landscapes are in my opinion, one of the most fun and the most simple things to quilt because really so many of the designs and textures are perfect if they're just simply linear. So here I'm just gonna echo the top of that landscape. I'm just carefully stitching, trying to make sure I stay, you know, roughly I'm aiming about an eighth of an inch off the top of those hills. And I'm using a thread color that contrasts very slightly with that yellow pink color. Okay, so there we go. Now I've got kind of a nice little line running right through the center of the quilt and that's stabilizing it. You can see I'm running off into this background. That's gonna get cut off whenever I put this in the hoop. That's a-okay. Okay, now I don't wanna be quilting this for a million and one years. So I am gonna widen the distance between my lines. So I might bring them a little bit closer together at times, like right there, I'll bring that in just a bit but I'm roughly aiming for about a quarter inch scale. What that means is about a quarter inch between the lines of quilting. So it's adding texture, but it's not adding so much texture, so much density and intensity that it just gets overwhelming. Here, I'll bring that line in and maybe sneak right back out again. This is kind of a nice way of adding a little bit of a different design. Just kind of think of it almost like a flame sneak in, make a point, sneak back out. I'll do that again. Actually, I think I'll go all the way across. You just have to look at the landscape, whether it's painted or pieced or appliqued, and just decide what's gonna fit the best. And because this was painted and I didn't really, I kind of played with the paint a little bit, you know, see how I didn't really make a strong line, well maybe that red line right there, but this is kind of hazy. I'm gonna quilt up to where I change to red before I change thread colors. And that's just my own decision, you know, based on what I think will look best. There's not really a right or wrong in this situation. Now I've got a really wide open toe foot. Downside of that is it can get hung up on the quilt. So there we go, that's situated. And now I'll go in, maybe I'll come all the way to the center and then form a point and then go all the way back out. And kind of keep these lines just a little bit closer together. It's adding texture. It's definitely going over that little bit. It's almost kind of an orange right there. And I think that's good. That is it for yellow. So I have switched to a dark red thread that is going to nearly blend in with this pink color. And I can stitch right up to it and say, yep, that is gonna nearly blend in. So instead of kind of keeping it safe and going, you know, with a very linear design, I think I'm gonna really swirl this up a notch. The thread is gonna nearly blend in. So what I'm creating here is basically texture. And the design I picked is undulation. So this is just a wild wiggly design. Of course, I wanna give myself plenty of space so that I can quilt across and have room to get in here but I might end up travel stitching a bit and that's okay too. Okay, so now I'm gonna stitch over a bit and now I'm just gonna messily echo this line. I'm gonna bring my lines closer together at times and then further apart. Again, I don't want it to get too dense, too intense. I don't wanna be quilting it for a million years, but I also wanna add that nice, beautiful texture. So roughly, let's say quarter inch scale. And notice that I do kind of whip the 
kind of whip the landscape around whenever I need to. This is the benefit of quilting something small. And please allow yourself to do that as much as you need to. That's kind of the whole point, to enjoy yourself quilting something small, something tidy on your machine, and that's a-okay. So now we take that undulation design and we just continue to emphasize whatever kind of foundation we set up the first time. Now, I don't wanna, this is one thing I don't wanna have happen. I don't want there to be a pocket of space left open and blank. I mean, that wouldn't be the end of the world. This is an art piece. I could go in there with beads or something fun, but you know, I really like to get this done completely on my machine. So I'm going to just end with a sharp point here and stitch back and go on ahead and fill this space in with back and forth rows of echoing until it's completely done. And this is the thing, you have absolute allowance to go back and forth and to just simply form nice sharp points whenever you need to, to fill in that space completely. Now I might not wanna necessarily have the points kind of stack up on top of one another. I don't think that necessarily looks good. So this time I'm gonna sneak through, bring my lines closer together. And then I have space now to go back through here one more time and then back out. So my key here will be, okay, let's get in here and fill this space in, maybe get wider lines in that little pocket and then narrow it down right there. So that way I can sneak in and sneak that out, not leave any gaps, but also not let it get too tight either. So here we go, I'll go right through the middle of there, widen that out. Nice little sharp point right here. Swing it around, nice echo. It's okay if the red goes on top. Stitch either if I stitch on top of the red itself or stitch on top of the yellow. No problem with that. There we go. I am super pleased with that beautiful texture. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna come up and continue that. I have a little bit more space to play here. I can even get into the purple just a bit. That's a-okay. And the key with undulation to make it more interesting is to not do the exact same pattern over and over and over again. So where I brought the line closer together, now I'm gonna widen that out. Where I brought the lines further apart, now I'm gonna bring that closer. And this is the key with making undulation look freeform and interesting and really makes it a very different texture for your quilts. I think I'll form a sharp point right there because that's kind of where the red is meeting the purple. That looks good. And then I'll fill in this area over here. It's kind of like this little pocket and I'll go back and forth into that space. So again, bring those lines closer together, form a point and come back. And do that one more time and I think that's gonna be perfect. All right, that looks good. Now I have a little bit of space over here and I can travel stitch all the way around the piece and go hit it. I could break thread. I think I'm just gonna go on ahead and stitch all the way around. And this is the advantage of free motion quilting is that you can stitch in all different directions and it's very fast. So I don't have to swing it around. I can just push it through the machine. The key here is running the machine fairly fast, but moving your hands slow and steady so that way your stitches form, you know, really I like a very small stitch personally. So I like tiny small stitches that each look about the same size and shape, but this is entirely dependent upon the speed of your hands moving and how fast your machine is running. So if I was to drastically speed up my hands, so I run my machine the same speed, but I push my hands really fast, you're gonna end up with big, giant, chunky stitches. So you kinda have to keep that balanced. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to purple and we'll be done with the sky. Okay, so just like that red area, I have just about blended my thread color here in the purple. So I'm adding texture and that's gonna be a big, giant, spiraling design. And this is called Ocean Currents. I think two spirals will do it. And this basically sets the foundation for the design. So when I get, what I do is first stitch the spirals in place, and then I go back in and do the same thing I did with undulation, and that is echo it. 
and I can echo it really nice and neatly or I can echo it in kind of a messy way. It's really just dependent on how I'm feeling, honestly. <laughs> and I also need to watch out for how these spirals, how the space goes in those spirals because it can get kind of weird in those areas. You know, it can kind of, the area can just lock itself up. You know, you put too many lines of quilting in there, you can end up with some open gap spaces, all that kind of stuff. So I just need to watch out for that. I think I'm gonna come in and then sneak right back out again from there. And I am going back to my roughly quarter inch scale. That looks good. Okay, so I don't really have a lot of space down in this area. So I'm going to focus on coming in and filling in these spirals and then I'll probably form a sharp point to get back out of that area. And so I hope you can see that with each line that I quilt, I'm taking a look at the quilt. I'm taking a look at the spaces that I have to stitch in. And then I'm making a judgment call of saying, okay, well, I need to go in there and I need to fill in that area and be able to sneak in there, fill it up all the way, and then sneak back out again. That's exactly what I just did. And there we go. I have a nice little point there. I think I might actually even kind of just take that and then run an echo all the way down along that red. And that just forms almost kind of like a little, it kind of makes it into a little pocket. And now I can go in there and fill it in. Probably just one more line. I know it looks like there might be a lot more space there, but I actually think what will work best is a very fluid spiral. So I'm just echoing, I'm internally echoing that space. And I'm gonna go in from there, just form a point and come back. And then right there, I'm just gonna break my thread. So I don't necessarily like that there ended up being kind of in almost like a squarish or rectangular -ish shape here, but it's not the end of the world. And I think once I get more lines into the background, I'll like it just fine. This is just one of those things, kind of you just end up with a surprise based on the foundation you set with the spirals. So this was a break that I, you know, happened in the middle of the quilt. So I have to tie it off and bury the thread tails. And I have a very detailed tutorial on how to do this kind of step by step at leahday.com slash hide threads. So check that out if you'd like to see a really careful tutorial on how to do this. Basically, I tie the thread tails in a knot, send a cheater needle through the middle layer of the quilt, and then I tuck those thread tails inside and then clip it off and that is all done. And I can do that with gloves on. <laughs> I've done it a million times. It can definitely become a habit that you don't even think about. So very, very speedy. Okay, so here we go. Drop my needle down, bring my bobbin thread up to the surface. That looks great. I've got kind of a messy thread tail here. There we go, tuck it all behind so it's not in my way. All right, so my game plan here at this stage is to come in, fill in that space completely so that way I don't have any gaps, weird gaps left inside that spiral. And then I might add a third spiral here in the top of that sky. So here we go. Let's bring that line in. And because I'm aiming to fill in that space completely, I'm really focused on kind of, I almost kind of went in thinking to bisect that into thirds. So I come in almost at the two thirds mark. And then now I'm going through thinking, okay, run right through the middle. So the, the space that was left open, I'm thinking run right through the middle of that space left open. Okay, now I'm gonna come in and do a nice big spiral right here. And this is just a, a design thing. Uh, when you have two of something, it doesn't necessarily look as good as three of something would look. And I think I'll come all the way down. I'm just kind of running right around the back side of that. That looks good. Because I've kind of, I've created my spiral. I don't want it to lock up that space too much. All right, now I'm just gonna go back and forth. Now echo that red, create a little pocket there, and then just do internal echoes to fill it in. That looks excellent. And then now I can go in and fill in this spiral. And then I'm gonna run right around and kind of echo around this new spiral that I created. So I'm gonna bounce in there and then bounce out. 
and bounce in there and bounce back out. Yeah, I like that. That's working really, really well. And keep in mind, you know, some of this is gonna get cut off by the hoop that I'm putting it into, so I don't have to worry about that. It's really easy to stitch too much. I feel like that's the right way of saying it, yeah. Stitching too much on an art quilt, where, you know, kind of we, we take the design out too far from the edges, and it's really unnecessary. It's a waste of time, because that's just gonna get cut off with your binding or however you trim the quilts up to finish it. Okay. Super happy with that. Now I'll come around. I can really clearly see what I'm doing as I fill in this spiral. So I think I have space for two passes. So this first pass, I'm gonna bring it in and stay fairly close. So I'm really bringing in those lines close together about an eighth of an inch scale. So that's gonna be noticeably tight in comparison to what I've stitched before. That's okay. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm focused on filling that space in completely. So now the lines are noticeably wider apart. And I think that worked out really well. Kind of a little weird spiral there, but hey, it looks good. I'm happy with that. There we go. And then now I have one little pocket right over here. All I have to do is just fill that in, a little triangle shape and a second little triangle shape and it's done. So I have switched thread colors and I have switched feet. This is a ruler foot and it is a type of darning foot. So I can still do free motion quilting, moving the quilt in all different directions, but I can also now use a ruler. And so this is the mini slide ruler that I designed for Grace Company. And what's really kind of weird <laughs> or coincidental, I don't know, um, is that the curve of this ruler almost perfectly, not exactly, but almost perfectly matches the curve in these hills. And I also have the super slide ruler and the deeper curves I find almost nearly match up with that one. Um, so these rulers were created, of course, years after I painted this piece. So it's just kind of a neat coincidence that they are lining up so nicely. So because I want to do ruler foot quilting for this, I have decided to go with my darkest green color first. And that is because I want to build the hills up from the bottom. So that way, as I'm quilting these lines, I can travel stitch along these lines. So I want to work from the bottom up. Okay. So I've got my green thread here, tuck it through the foot, drop the needle down. And again, always give yourself just a little bit of time to play and experiment and then see if you need to adjust your foot height. This is just it's just a good practice to get into just so that you know how smoothly and evenly it feels to move the quilt. It might throw you off as you switch from one style of quilting to another because this feels actually a lot easier and smoother to move the quilt than it did whenever I was free motion quilting. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm guesstimating on my placement of the ruler. Again, this is not gonna match up exactly perfectly with that hill, but it's gonna be close enough. So I'm lining this up roughly to be about a quarter inch from the top of that hill. And I'm gonna kind of let it nudge as I need to. It's just serving as a guide. I'm running that ruler foot right up against the edge of that ruler. And I'm letting that be a guide for the stitching. Now I'm gonna shift the ruler over just a bit. That looks good. Keep on going. And then if ever you're like, all right, well, that's just not working. It's not really lining up exactly the way you want it to. Just set the ruler aside. You can just go into regular free motion quilting and stitch along that line. That's a-okay. And then travel stitch down. And then now I'm gonna use the edge of that ruler foot as a visible guide. So right now I am stitching backwards and I am lining up the edge of that ruler foot with the line of stitching I just did. And about whenever I remember I was using the ruler about right there, I think I'll line this back up again, swing it around so that way I can see what I'm doing. That looks good. And now it's lining up perfectly through that section. So now I'm just pressing firmly on the ruler down on the quilt. I'm pressing the ruler foot up against that ruler and then gliding it through. And as you can see, I move a little bit faster because I don't have to stitch quite so carefully through those areas. Now again, pressing firmly. There's, I got good fingertip pressure on that ruler and then I'm guiding it through the machine. Now I know I set the ruler aside. Let me see if things are lining up a little bit better now. I slide that down and that's actually lining up almost perfect. So I'm gonna go with it. 
down, down, and off the quilt, stitch down. And so what this is accomplishing is just exact perfect quarter inch spacing. And I just think it looks nice. It's, it's just yet another style of design. It's a way of saying, okay, well, the sky was a little bit crazier and wilder, and then here's something more, not necessarily formulaic, but just a little bit more of a regulated texture through the landscape. And I just like that. It's kind of creating a contrast that's subtle. It's, um, it's just a contrast in texture. It's saying that, you know, the sky section could have swirls and, and whirls and stuff. And then this landscape has nice evenly spaced lines. And then another thing you can do is you can mix this up. You don't have to run the uh, design running right along the top of the hill. You don't have to echo it that way. And whenever I switch to the next thread color, I'll show you exactly what I mean. I think I'll start pivoting the ruler right here. Shift that down. That looks great. And then over. As you can see, you know, it's not quite as fluid as free motion quilting because of course I've got the ruler in my hand and I'm focused on that as well. But it's still a really wonderful form of quilting, particularly if you're interested in, you know, having that a little bit more control over the design, having a little bit more of like, okay, I want exactly those lines created with exactly that spacing and to have it more systematized. I think that's really the best term. All right, just one or two more lines in this area and it will be done. That looks good. And I might even switch to my other ruler and see if that, it's just not deep enough. The mini slide and super slide are both continuous line curve rulers, but the super slide has a deeper curve on it. And that's why it's working so well for this particular hill. So now I'm gonna veer away from it and just finish off that line just like so. I think that looks great. Okay, so I switched to a medium green and I'm gonna just free motion quilt right into that I'm just right along the top of that hill and I'm going to get on top of the line of stitching this darkest line of green stitching and I, it's hard to see because I've got that ruler foot on but I think I'm exactly on that line okay and so now I want to figure out how to create a nice texture and you can see I have some lines here created by my paintbrush I think I want to run along that so the thing you've got to keep in mind with ruler foot quilting is the quarter inch rules. That is how everything works. So I'm gonna stitch along that time. This is just uh, the line on the top of the hill that is travel stitching. Okay, and then now I'm gonna line up my ruler. So I'm roughly gonna run kind of almost parallel with the top of that hill, but not quite. And it's gonna be right along the line of that paintbrush stroke. So there we go. And now I just press firmly and stitch over. Now I'm going to hit that line that I first stitched, travel stitch along it. And this is just careful travel stitching. And I like to be able to see what I'm doing, guys. This is, you know, this is one of those things. If it starts to get messy, I, you know, I really stop liking it <laughs> pretty quickly. So I like to see what I'm doing and I still haven't stitched down far enough. So a couple more stitches there to where I can line up my ruler with that line I just stitched. Okay, that looks good. Then come on down. So this is basically an echo, kind of running, you know, yeah, it's kind of running at a nice angle to the top of that hill. Travel stitch again, just come over quarter inch and then line it up again. And the quarter inch is so easy because the ruler foot is a half inch wide with the needle in the center position so that whenever you line up the ruler with the edge of that foot, you're gonna get a perfect quarter inch spacing every time. All right, now I can just kind of stitch straight down because now I'm on off the quilt itself and into that area that's gonna get cut off. And then I can just wiggle my ruler back and forth until it looks like it's in the right position and then stitch in. Now, let's see if I can leave it in the same position, travel stitch back and do that last line all in one go. There we go. And stitch up. That looks excellent. Okay, so now I wanna do another one over here and I might do that middle hill with this thread color as well. 
So I'm going to stitch all the way around. Come to this other side. And let's do that again. So this time I want to change up the angle too, but I still want to get my first line knocked out. And you can see that edge, that mini slide ruler just fits so perfectly with what I painted. That's just a happy accident. Okay, so I'm estimating the space on the ruler. I just nudged it over a quarter inch and then now I'm holding it firmly in place as I stitch along the top edge of that hill and down. And then now let's, let's really change it up. That was kind of a subtle direction change in comparison to what I had on there in comparison to what I did before. If I do something like that, that'll be a little bit more noticeable. We could have all of the lines come to a point right there. That would be kind of cool. Let me show you how that would work. So if that is the point where all the lines are gonna come to, then you have to kind of just use the ruler and estimate. So I know I don't want it to run like this because I just stitch right along my line. So I can nudge it out so that I've got the quarter inch mark that's etched on the ruler lined up with that stitching line from before that we stitched first for that hill. Press firmly and stitch on down. So that's creating a really noticeable angle. Very nice. Okay, now I wanna keep the ruler in this position and only move this end of the ruler. So I'm gonna stitch down about a, half, a quarter inch and I'm just gonna nudge over my ruler. I'm gonna try and leave this end in position. And the reason is I want that line, I want my uh, stitching to line up in that spot over and over again. And I nudged it just a little bit over, but that's okay. That looks great. Now I'm gonna slightly move the ruler again. And I'm just winging out the tail end, that's all. And then stitching off. And again, don't worry about rotating your quilt around. <laughs> That's required for something like this. Now I'm gonna start travel stitching on that line from before, and it looks like I only have about one more line of quilting to do here. So I'm gonna come in, and then I, I don't like, there's like a gap right there. I don't really like that. So I'm gonna go in with one more line to escape from this area. That looks perfect. Okay, and then now, I want to kind of estimate this. I want to run my line right through the middle there. Let's see here. I think I need to travel stitch back just a bit. Get right on the tip of that hill. So there I am, okay. And then now I'm estimating space. Let's say about right there. No, 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 nudge it this way. <laughs> you kind of have to play with it as you go. If you're not exactly sure where the ruler needs to be, and then keep in mind, you can always just take the ruler away and just quilt through it the way you think it should be. Okay, that looks great. And in all actuality, I think that this is the perfect red color to finish out the rest of the hills. So I was gonna switch to a very, very light green, but I think that will stand out too much. So I'm gonna stick with this thread color and I'm gonna carefully travel stitch across the top of this hill. And I could do this with the ruler in my hand because I stitched that particular hill with the ruler but I'm just gonna do this with regular free motion quilting. It's a good skill to build and a good skill to practice. Okay, got this little hill right here. Let's check out my rulers and see if I could maybe do this hill with the ruler. Hmm, that's not exactly lining up. And it doesn't look like this one's lining up either. Okay, so we're just gonna stitch this one freehand. So whenever you're, you're quilting on something that isn't marked and you're not being guided, this is called freehand quilting. And that means that you're just stitching it as you are pushing your, with your hands. Um, now, technically, because I was following a line, you would call that maybe marked quilting, but look, it's really nothing to get too worried about semantics. <laughs> not, not at all. Okay, I think this one would be cool if we get almost nearly vertical lines, maybe like a little bit of an angle like that. I think that would be cool. So I'm gonna stitch out. And you can also vary the distance between the lines. Like we could do almost a pinstripe effect. So let's try that. I'm gonna bring the ruler. I don't want it to look like it's echoing that hill. I'm gonna bring the ruler almost vertical, stitch down. Now I'm gonna travel stitch over on that line. I know the green blends, but I am basically travel stitching on another line of stitching and estimating my space to be about a quarter inch. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quarter inch spacing, then a half inch spacing, then a quarter inch spacing. So I do the quarter inch spacing by lining up the edge of the ruler with the edge of the foot. Okay, so that's how I do that. Now I'm gonna travel stitch down a half inch. Now this spacing, I'm gonna use the etched lines on the ruler as a guide. So now I'm lining up the ruler so that the line that is one from the edge, so a quarter inch inside the ruler, and then it looks like I need to backtrack a little bit here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now when I stitch down, that's gonna be half inch spacing. Okay, now stitch down again. Just travel stitching across the top of that hill, and now move my ruler, just nudge the ruler over, and I can do that quarter inch spacing. So that's what I'm gonna do. I set that stage and I like it. I think it looks cute. Now I stitch down a half of an inch, line that ruler back up again. And you know, if you're ever like, oh, where, where was the ruler supposed to go? You know, I think on something like this, it's okay if it's off slightly. I don't think that you have to line it up exactly every time, but if you wanted to, and you wanted to be sure that it wasn't, you weren't ending up with more of a curve here and less of a curve down there, you could always use tape to kind of tape off on the ruler and give yourself a guide for where you're lining that up. But I think this is working A-OK. -okay. okay, it looks like only about maybe one or two lines left to go. As you can see, spacing it out definitely creates a cool effect. And it, of course, leaves a little bit more space open on the quilt, and that adds drama as well. You don't have to stitch it to death. I wanna say that a lot. I'm saying that to myself because I'm the one that <laughs> tends to stitch my quilts to death. All right, here we go. So now I'm gonna travel stitch, and actually I think I'll travel stitch along this hill since I already travel stitched the other one once before. I don't want the thread to build up too much in those areas. Alrighty, and then this one, I think I'm just gonna do just a normal echo, the same way I did this first one. You know, simplify it down. There's nothing wrong with just doing the same thing that you did before. That's a-okay. So that was kind of a nice wiggly wobbly. Following the hill, stitch down a bit, line up my ruler, and then stitch along it, nice little echo. And then just one more line of quilting looks like would do it. So that's it for this video. And thank you so much for joining me on this little landscape quilting adventure. I am so delighted with how this came out, guys. And I am so happy it is no longer going to be tucked in a cabinet, tucked in a drawer. I've had this unfinished for seven years or more. So I'm really happy with how it's turned out and I can't wait to go get my hoop, pop it in and hang it on my wall. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a like, subscribe to my channel and come and check out all of the tools and supplies and sewing machine I used in this video at leahday.com. Until next time, let's go quick.